Good morning, how are we doing? So, question yesterday, how long would it take to get results insert here? How long would it, what's realistic in this time? We're talking about a 100 day challenge, which if you want more info about, comment below with 100. We just had a seminar last week inside our group about how to achieve more in the, in the next 100 days in the lead up to Christmas, even with obstacles in the way, without falling off the wagon, as we so often do around these, tight, these months that come up with social events, meals out, Christmas, etc. But today I want to talk about this in terms of from a point of view of what's realistic. What if I have a slow metabolism? These are just a, a conversation that came up. And firstly, how long would it take? Well, it really depends. Like I was on a course yesterday. We were on a course. And th these are things that, that we invest in ourselves as a, as a team to make sure that we're up to date with the science of everything from nutrition, like we've got menopause, um, we're going to a menopause conference soon. Lots of researchers speaking in on there as, as a team. And from that to from yesterday to more around the psychology of change to behavior to fitness trends to health and fitness, what's working, what's not, what are other people doing, what's working, what's not working, and that side of things. And you come away from these things like super motivated with loads of ideas. But the, the difference is, is the people in anything who get the best results are the people who pick one thing and do it very well. And it's the same when it comes to getting results, whether this is something that we're adding into Fruity Fit to help people stick to things for longer, to account, to help them with more accountability, whatever it is, there's lots of things we can do. But if we try and do everything, it'll be overwhelming and more confusing for everyone. And it's similar when it comes to trying to lose weight, getting fit, getting healthier. We're like, we mix a lot of beliefs. Like I have to have breakfast because that speeds up my metabolism. But I can't, but I want to fast as well. So I fast during the day, but I can't eat after 6 p.m. But I don't finish work till eight. So now I'm hungry and I'll just snack on the way home. I'm picking now. Now I feel rubbish. Now I might as well give up. Good morning, Lara. And we mix all of these beliefs that we've picked up through various diets, from fasting to keto, can't eat carbs, to, to blood sugar diets where we've got to eat 30 different plants or when it's not going to work, to, to, other, to Atkins where we're eating just protein, to the opposite where we say no protein's now bad, to carbs are bad. And it's all context. And the problem is, is the media are very clever of how they report research. No one really reads to the bottom of the article. And sometimes in the article, if the, in the media, they'll put at the bottom, like, um, the researchers did say, though, that a lot more research is needed here. And this, 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 this happened. So maybe we can take it as a pinch of salt. Or this research was in four people and they didn't really stick to what they were actually researching. Um, and that's what often happens in nutrition research. And then we're like, yes, it must be blood sugar levels. And this is a, this is a key element of here. So... There's first of that side of it. So it takes time and it has to be implemented very well consistently. And this leads me to what if I have a slow metabolism? What if I have a slow metabolism? So we'll never actually know that. You can't test that. Anyone who says you've got a slow metabolism, unless you're looking at thyroid side of things and you're getting tested for that and you're taking medication and, and maybe adjusting that. There is also other variables like short term food intake can impact that a little bit from soy to um, iodine, you name it, um, phytoestrogens, you, you name it. Like there's cruciferous vegetables. There's, there's lots of things that can Im impact it short term. But in terms of metabolism, what happens if I have a slow metabolism? The only way you're truly going to know is by picking one thing and really sticking to this. And this is a very boring thing, but I'm sharing this because I want to be open and honest with what it really takes to see if you have a slow metabolism rather than testing every blood sugar going because it's, it's actually not correlated with your metabolism at all anyway, which is this, is to literally see how many calories you're actually eating. And it's boring, it's monotonous, but you do that over a few weeks to a month. And you see what happens with your activity as well. You just track your activity, how many times you're exercising. And have a look at comparing your BMR, so your basal metabolic rate, which is something we can help you with and know that, you know, based on your height, based on how many calories, for example, I'm a very tall person, just joking. I'm, I'm five foot eight and three quarters if I wear these trainers, which are, are like stilts. And I'm not that tall. So if I'm next to someone like one of our other coaches, say 
Jesse, Darcy, Danny, who are a lot taller than me. Son of Marge, actually no. Yeah, Jesse definitely is taller than me. The metabolic rate will be higher compared to me, because they're a bigger human being. It's like with your other half, um, they'll burn more calories just from living, okay? From, if they don't move, they'll still burn more calories from, in terms of if they don't move, if you don't move, the bigger person is just gonna burn more calories. However, to, to test whether we are actually eating in accordance with what a calorie deficit would look like, whether we're looking in accordance with how many calories we need to live, we need to have a look at how much we're actually having over a two week period, three week period, four week period. And no matter what anyone says, this is actually the fastest way to have a look at whether your metabolism is slow or not, or whether we're actually certain foods that were perceived as healthy can be healthy, but quite highly calorific. And actually, if your goal is fat loss to get healthy, maybe we need to tackle that, then that. Or it might be that you go, you know what, no, I need to actually increase my activity. And actually, like someone said the other week, by joining Fruity Fit and focusing on strength, muscle strength, exercise, their waist hip ratio has improved. And all of a sudden, oh, maybe, maybe that's actually what I was aiming for. Maybe that's a better goal to have. Maybe it's not my metabolism. Maybe it's the type of exercise I was doing. And this is where we learn what's going to work for you. But that takes time. It's monotonous and boring. But guess what else is taking time, monotonous and boring? Jumping from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. So I hope that helps today and lets you know that it's going to be boring and monotonous anyway, whether you stay the same and get, stay stuck in where you're at right now in terms of trying to lose weight, hopping from one thing to another, which is high to low, high to low. Or sticking to something that will actually give you the best feedback that we can possibly get right now, which is tracking. Track for four weeks, track for a month, not forever. See where you're at, see how much you're actually eating, see how much you're moving, see what your weight does over that time, see what your hips, waist do over that time. And then we can assess, is it a consistency thing? Is it, do I need more accountability? Or is it actually that, like maybe, maybe there is something there. Maybe my, when I compare to my basal metabolic rate though, maybe you're actually surprised that you're like, ah, I'm actually quite a small human being height wise. And this is probably why it's harder for me. And it is harder. Don't get me wrong. Like if you're five foot and, and you go out for a meal with someone who's five foot 10 or six foot, they don't say, oh, you're five foot. So your portion is going to be this big. You're six foot. Your portion is going to be this big. Like we don't do that, but already you are kind of at a bit of a, uh, not a loss, but uh, behind a bit because you're going to have to do either have kind of manage your calories over the day or show some kind of dietary restraint to go, am I full? You know, maybe 50% of the meal, am I actually full right now? Let's reassess and go again. And, and it's hard because we often eat what we're given. Morning Sue, morning Sue. Always wanted to say that. Uh, I don't need as much food as I thought I did. Yeah, when you, when you have that pause in, it's like, because I'm the same, Italian family, you know, you get given your meals and if you don't finish five plates of pasta, Nonna says, well, you obviously don't love Nonna's cooking, I won't bother anymore. Um, that was back when, not anymore. Um, but it's an interesting thing that can stick with us. But actually, if we're just doing something because we did it when we were younger. There's many things we did when we were younger, from nappies to you name it. But it doesn't mean we have to do it now. And, you know, what would we say to a kid who you know, said, oh, last week, I, did, I couldn't do it. We'd say, try again, just try again. I, was, I couldn't ride my bike last week. Well, just, that was last week. Today's a new day. We're great at giving advice. Let's take our own advice. Anyway, I could ramble all day. Have an awesome day. Drink your water, eat your protein. Um, do the boring, monotonous things day by day and you will get results and I'll see you later.